Perhaps you have wondered why the red fox became the sworn enemy of Australian farmers. Let's learn about this red fox now, where their elegant appearance attracts all eyes. Attractive appearance and shiny eyes, combined with agility and excellent adaptability to many environments. Red foxes have become an unpopular topic, faced with constant pressure from hunters. They become the main target to ensure a stable source of income and provide nutritious food for the community. Many farmers choose to raise poultry with the belief that chickens are not only easy to care for, but also bring a stable market. However, chicken flocks often face the risk of being hunted by red foxes, which creates great pressure and concern for farmers. Monitoring and predicting red fox movements becomes a significant challenge. Faced with an emergency situation for their chicken flocks, farmers face great pressure, requiring careful management and the implementation of strong protective measures to ensure the safety of their flocks in advance. Red Fox Attack Each year, red fox attacks cause economic losses of up to hundreds of millions of dollars. Faced with this challenge, some farmers have chosen to build sturdy fence systems around chicken coops for added protection. This system is made from rust-resistant steel, providing high durability to prevent fox intrusion. However, although this method seems safe and reliable, sometimes it may not be practical in all situations. What do you think about this approach? Please share your opinion so we can discuss and find the most suitable solution. Currently, the sudden increase in the number of red foxes is causing many concerns, creating great challenges for the farming community. To face this situation, some farmers have chosen hunting methods to reduce the number of red foxes, and it is worth noting that this action is completely compliant with legal regulations and allowed by the government.
In addition, this valuable food source should not be overlooked. Did you know that red fox meat is a rich source of nutrients? In particular, it provides fat, protein, and many B vitamins such as B12, B6, as well as many minerals such as iron, zinc, phosphorus, and selenium. Proper consumption of red fox meat as part of an overall balanced diet not only provides nutritional benefits but is also a delicious culinary experience. We see wild boars roaming in the fields, causing damage to the crops of farmers. Wild boars are a rapidly reproducing species that adapt well to their environment and cause significant destruction. In the United States, Wild boars are found in most states, with an estimated population of around 6 million. They pose a major threat to agriculture in the U.S., causing billions of dollars in damage each year. Wild boars are omnivores and can damage all types of crops, including rice, corn, potatoes, yams, as well as various vegetables and fruits. They are also capable of digging and disrupting irrigation systems, roads, and other agricultural structures. Another consequence of the unfavorable situation with wild boars is serious water pollution in many water sources. As wild boars freely roam in search of food, they can dig deep into the ground, making water sources increasingly dirty and polluted. This poses a threat to the sustainability of water systems, ecosystem structures, and adds more challenges for farmers and resource managers. The sudden increase in the feral hog population in North Carolina has not only created a strong market for hog farming, but also poses significant challenges. Studies from the United States Fish and Wildlife Service project that by 2024, the number of wild pigs in North Carolina could reach about 2 million, accounting for 10% of all feral swine in the United States. This situation has created an emergency situation that requires strong intervention from the community. The destructive behavior of wild boars against trees, crops and other property has created a major challenge, requiring immediate intervention. North Carolina not only leads in feral hog numbers, but is also one of the states hardest hit by their negative impacts, surpassing Texas, Georgia, Tennessee, Missouri and Kansas.
Wild boars are not only an environmental threat, but also pose a risk to public health, carrying dangerous diseases to humans and livestock. Faced with these challenges, people in North Carolina have taken extremely strong preventive measures with trapping and hunting becoming the main solutions to control and reduce feral hog populations. Hunting wild boars is a proposed solution to control the increasing wild boar population. This approach has been implemented in many countries worldwide, including the United States. Wild boar hunting needs to be carried out by experienced hunters equipped with the necessary gear. Before the hunt, hunters need to thoroughly understand the terrain and gather information from local residents to predict the behavior of wild boars. Hunting teams are divided into multiple groups, each strategically positioned. When wild boars appear, the teams coordinate closely to capture the prey. Hunting dogs play a crucial role in tracking the traces of wild boars. They not only help locate and pursue the prey, but can also prevent a wild boar from escaping before it has a chance. The cleverness of hunters at strategic positions ensures that no boar can escape their attention. Using sophisticated hunting tools, it is expected that around 95 million wild boars will be captured in the U.S., although the wild boar population continues to increase. Deploying various measures will be a wise decision. In 2023, hunters in the U.S captured approximately 9 million wild boars. However, the number of wild boars is still increasing rapidly, requiring the implementation of various measures to control this animal species. The captured wild boars are processed and donated to other regions as gifts. These solutions have proven effective in controlling the proliferation of invasive species.
snap traps, like bear traps, but specialized for feral hogs, became a common choice among farmers facing this problem. They seek out areas with high pig activity, setting up traps with attractive baits such as corn, potatoes, or even raspberries. Waiting until the hogs fall into traps requires patience on the part of the farmer. But according to the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, there was a 20% decrease in wild hog numbers in North Carolina in 2023 compared to the previous year. Large traps capable of catching wild boar herds have been designed by arranging sturdy steel plates together. These traps are installed in areas with high pig activity and bait is placed inside. Cameras assist in remote control and each trap can capture a significant number of wild boar in one session. Pitfall traps, net traps and cage traps are solutions used by Texas farmers. Pitfall traps involve digging a hole, placing bait, and placing a delicate trap at the entrance. Although effective, pitfall traps carry risks of injury to wild boars. Net Traps, developed by Texas A&M University in 2005, offer a humane solution. Large nets placed in areas frequented by wild boar are activated remotely, minimizing the risk of injury. Cage traps made from stainless steel are another effective method. These traps, with bait inside, are monitored remotely and activated when wild boars enter. Although these hunting and trapping methods have made progress in controlling feral pig populations, challenges remain. Wild boars are intelligent and flexible, making them a complex problem to manage. The rich forest ecosystem, rich in food diversity, creates challenges in controlling the number of wild pigs. Collaboration between communities, governments, and environmental experts remains important to manage this problem.
Apart from hunting, there are other measures that can be applied to control wild boars, such as constructing barrier fences to prevent their intrusion into cultivated areas, planting crops resistant to wild boars, and using pesticides to deter them. Researching and developing safe and effective preventive measures against wild boars is also essential. that one solution is better than another? If so, please share your opinions and perspectives below. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to support our channel and follow upcoming videos. Share this video with your friends so they can also have the opportunity to watch and enjoy. The decline in other predators and the sudden increase in the coyote population in Canada is a notable phenomenon impacting both habitat and agriculture. One of the reasons for the sharp increase in the wolf population in Canada and what measures are farmers taking to deal with them. Kill him, kill him. Do it. Below is the content of the video. Please leave a comment OK below if you are interested in this content. Wolves, as top predators, have cleverly taken advantage of changes in the environment to expand their living territories and adapt to new challenges. One of the important reasons for this sudden increase is the significant decrease in natural competitors such as grizzly bears and jaguars. Overhunting and habitat loss greatly reduce the population of these predators, creating an ecological vacuum that wolves quickly occupied. Changes in habitat not only create new opportunities for wolves, but also pose challenges in managing and protecting the urban environment. Another important factor is climate change, which is making Canada's climate more favorable for wolves, helping them adapt to a wider range of climatic conditions. This change may be an important factor behind the recent sudden increase in the wolf population. The wolf population is estimated to have reached about 30,000 in Canada, especially concentrated in areas with abundant food and shelter. Currently, about 60% of Canada's land area has become an ideal habitat for them. However, this also creates challenges for both people and land management. Wolves not only affect the ecosystem, but also cause economic problems for the agricultural industry, as they are capable of attacking livestock causing an estimated loss of up to 10,000 animals per year in Canada, with the value of the damage was up to $10 million. Wolves have strong fertility, with cubs starting to breed after just two years, helping the species grow rapidly. Each litter of wolves can have from four to six pups and pregnancy lasts 60 days. During the first six months of life, they receive special care from their mother, helping them develop and prepare for independent life. Canada's wolf population has increased significantly from approximately 10,990 to 30,000 by 2023 posing challenges in maintaining ecological balance and managing the population. This growth rate is expected to continue in the future, posing many challenges for conservation and environmental management.
Canadian farmers have introduced many measures to deal with wolves, including hunting campaigns. They plan the hunt with the group, identify hunting areas, establish appropriate schedules, and decide which hunting methods will be used. A technical understanding of coyote behavior and ecology is important for effective planning. Hunting wolves is often done by many means, such as guns, traps, or using hunting dogs. Guns are the main means of hunting wolves. Commonly used guns include rifles or shotguns, often equipped for accuracy and range. Guns can be used in night hunting campaigns or in different weather conditions. Hunters use guns to shoot wolves when they appear in sight. For night hunting campaigns, hunters often use flash or infrared lights to help see targets clearly in low light conditions. In addition to guns, the use of coyote traps has become an important strategy in controlling the coyote population in Canada. Traps are placed in snowy areas to control the coyote population, especially in snowy environments in winter. This is done carefully to avoid negative impacts on the biosphere. Traps may include leg traps, tree traps, or booby traps. Traps are placed in locations where wolves often pass, such as trails, roads, or areas where they find food. The trap will activate when the coyote enters and causes them to be captured. Hunting dogs are also trained to track and catch wolves. Hunting dog breeds such as wolfhounds are often popular in hunting wolves. They have the ability to track the scent and sound of coyotes and guide hunters to their location. Once the coyote is located, the hound will lead the hunter to their location, where the hunter can use guns or traps to capture the coyote. These means are often used flexibly depending on environmental conditions, type of wolf, and the objectives of the hunting campaign. Flexibility and choice of hunting methods help optimize the likelihood of capture and minimize the risk of causing unwanted harm to the surrounding environment. If you have ever used one of the three methods I just mentioned above, please leave comment number one to let us know.
After wolves are hunted, careful harvesting and handling are carried out to ensure the hunt is legal and safe. This is also to minimize negative impacts on the surrounding environment. However, measures to control wolf populations also face concerns about negative impacts on the biosphere. It has been suggested that wolves play an important role in maintaining natural balance and controlling herbivore populations. Therefore, balancing short-term benefits and long-term ecosystem impacts is a complex challenge facing land management in Canada. If you find this video interesting, please like, share and subscribe to the channel to follow new content. If you are having difficulty managing the farm or are facing some problem, please share your opinion in the comment section below. Your feedback helps us create content tailored to your specific needs. Thanks for watching.